At 27, my life was a tapestry of hard-earned successes and simple joys. I was Jenna, a name known in the corridors of a renowned company, not just for my skills, but for the warmth I carried. It was here, amidst the hustle of deadlines and the aroma of brute ideas, that I met Alex. He wasn't just another suit, he was a burst of energy, a puzzle I couldn't resist solving. Our first project together was more than just work, it was a dance of minds, a clash and melding of thoughts. Jenna, your approach is something else. Makes me think outside every box I've ever known. Alex had remarked one late evening, his eyes reflecting the glow of the computer screen. I remember blushing, hiding it behind a chuckle. Well, Alex, keep up. I have plenty more where that came from. I teased back, the challenge in my voice unmistakable. Our romance wasn't a slow burn, it was a wildfire. It swept through our lives, turning routine coffee breaks into whispered plans and mundane weekends into explorations of what two hearts beating in sync could discover together. Our wedding was a crescendo of this beautiful melody we'd created. Friends, family, and even skeptical co-workers watched as we promised to walk through life hand in hand. The first two years felt like a dream painted in the brightest colors. We were the couple that made single friends sigh and married ones nod in appreciation. We found joy in the little things, the shared popcorn during movie nights, the laughter over burnt toast on lazy Sundays, and the quiet understanding during walks under the canopy of stars. But beneath the surface of this seemingly perfect life was a silent storm brewing. The joy of our love was shadowed by an absence, a void where the laughter of a child should have been. Each month brought hope, and with it a tinge of despair. The negative tests were like whispers, reminding us of the one dream that remained just out of reach. I remember the nights, lying next to Alex, the moon casting a soft glow on his face. Do you ever think about it? About, kids, I mean, I'd ask, my voice, barely above a whisper. Alex, ever the optimist, would pull me close, his voice steady and sure. Of course, Jenna. It'll happen when it's meant to be. We've got each other, and that's more than enough for now. But as months turned into years, the absence grew into an unspoken presence between us. The walks felt longer, the movies less captivating, and the parties, the parties became a reminder of what we longed for but couldn't seem to grasp. The laughter of our friend's children echoed like a melody we couldn't quite reach. The air was thick with the sounds of laughter and clinking glasses. Alex and I were at one of our friend's annual bashes, a night when everyone seemed to forget their worries. I was mingling, half listening to stories I'd heard a dozen times, when a voice cut through the din, a voice from a past chapter of my life. Jenna, is that really you? The voice was unmistakable, laced with a boldness that belonged to only one person, Lisa, my high school friend. She hadn't changed a bit, still carrying herself with a presence that turned heads, her style as striking as her personality. I turned, my surprise morphing into a smile. Lisa. I can't believe it's you. It's been ages. Her laughter rang out, genuine and hearty. Too long, Jenna. Look at you, all sophisticated and successful. I always knew you'd make something of yourself. Our conversation flowed effortlessly, memories of our school days weaving through the chatter of the party. I noticed Alex watching from a distance, his eyes curious, but cautious. When Lisa waved him over, his approach was measured, his greeting polite, but reserved. Alex, meet Lisa, an old friend from school. I introduced them, watching the interaction closely. Alex extended his hand, his smile polite. Nice to meet you, Lisa. Jenna's told me a lot about her school days. Lisa's reply was quick, a hint of mischief in her eyes. All good things, I hope. Jenna and I go way back. Had quite the adventures, didn't we? The conversation was light, filled with the banter of rekindled friendships and shared histories. But I caught the subtle glances, the unspoken words hanging in the air. Lisa was a force, her vivacity undeniable but her reputation from our school days, the heartbreaker, the free spirit, lingered in the back of my mind. Over time, Lisa's visits became more frequent, our chats more intimate. 
We shared stories, laughed over old jokes, and confided in each other like the years apart had been mere days. It felt good, having a piece of my past back, a reminder of carefree days. But as Lisa's presence grew, so did the silence between Alex and me. The void of our unfulfilled dream seemed to grow wider, the absence louder. Our home, once filled with the echoes of our laughter, now held whispered conversations and unspoken fears. It was during one of Lisa's visits that I finally voiced the worry that had been gnawing at me. The evening was winding down, the room bathed in the soft glow of the setting sun. Lisa, I don't know what's wrong. Alex and I, we've been trying, but, it's just not happening. The child we've dreamed of, it feels like a mirage now. Lisa's eyes met mine, a depth of understanding in her gaze. Jenna, these things can be complicated. Have you seen a doctor? Sometimes it's not just a one-person issue. Her words, simple yet profound, struck a chord. It was a reality I had skirted around, a truth I had been reluctant to face. But in that moment, with Lisa's frankness, the path forward seemed a little clearer, albeit daunting. Months turned into a silent agony of waiting and hoping. Each failed attempt at starting a family chipped away at the joy that once filled our home. It's just not happening, Alex. We need to face this, face it together. I said one night, the desperation clear in my voice. Alex's reluctance was like a wall between us. Jenna, why are you so hung up on this? I'm telling you, it's not me. But fine, if it makes you happy, I'll do the tests. He finally conceded after countless conversations that seemed to go in circles. The day we went for the full examination felt like a step into the unknown. A part of me was scared of what we might find, but a bigger part just wanted answers. Whatever this brings, we'll deal with it, right? I asked Alex, seeking some reassurance. He just nodded, his usual confidence replaced by a quiet tension. The wait for the results was like living in limbo, each day stretching longer than the last. During these trying times, Lisa, my blast from the past, was a surprising source of comfort. Jenna, you're one tough cookie. Whatever comes out of this, you'll handle it. You always do, she'd say, her support unwavering. But life has a way of throwing curveballs when you least expect them. It was a chance encounter on the street that planted a seed of doubt in my mind. A former classmate, someone who knew the high school version of Lisa all too well, stopped me with a reminder of the past. Jenna, watch out for Lisa, okay? She was a real piece of work back in the day, breaking hearts left and right. You remember, right? She said, her tone half concerned, half curious. I laughed it off, the idea of Lisa, my rock during these turbulent times, being anything less than genuine seemed far-fetched. People change. Lisa's not like that anymore. I responded, but the conversation left a nagging feeling in the pit of my stomach. Later that day, as Alex and I sat in our usual silence, I decided to address the elephant in the room. Alex, can I ask you something? What do you think about Lisa? His reaction was immediate and defensive, a stark contrast to his usual nonchalance. Why does it matter? She's just your friend. I don't care about her one way or the other, he said, his tone a mix of irritation and something else I couldn't quite place. His words did little to ease my mind. Instead, they added to the growing list of questions and doubts that seemed to have no answers. As the days turned into weeks, the waiting game for the test results became a battleground of unspoken fears and doubts. Life at home had taken a sharp turn, the once comforting walls of our home now echoing with Alex's harsh words and relentless criticism. It wasn't just an off day or a bad mood, it was a drastic change that hung heavily in the air. Jenna, can you try a little harder? Look at you, it's always the same old jeans and t-shirt. When you're with me, I want to show you off, not make excuses for your plain Jane look," Alex remarked coldly one evening, his words cutting deeper than he probably intended. I stood there, a mix of hurt and disbelief in my heart. Alex, what's this about? Since when did appearances become more important than who we are to each other? I replied, my voice shaking slightly. 
but it didn't stop at my appearance. It was everything, my cooking, my cleaning, the very essence of my being. Jenna, this meal, it's bland. And the house, it looks like a tornado hit it. Is this really the best you can do? He'd say, his dissatisfaction clear. Each word stung, each comment a blow to the life we had built together. Confused and hurt, I turned to the one person who had become my confidant through it all, Lisa. Lisa, I don't know what's happening. It's like he's looking for reasons to be unhappy, to criticize me. I don't feel like I'm enough anymore. I shared, the vulnerability clear in my voice. Lisa's response was thoughtful, her words a mix of support and practicality. Jenna, he's being a total jerk. But maybe you guys just need a break from the routine. Why not plan a surprise, something to reignite the spark? How about a romantic trip? The idea was like a beacon of hope, a chance to mend the growing rift between us. Filled with a newfound determination, I approached Alex with the idea. Alex, I've been thinking. Maybe we need a change of scenery, some time away from all this stress. What do you say to two weeks in Hawaii, just the two of us? I suggested, the hopeful tremor in my voice betraying my anxiety over his response. To my surprise, his reaction was positive, a glimmer of the old Alex shining through. Jenna, that sounds, actually great. You're right, we could use the time away. Let's do it. He agreed, his words a soothing balm to my frayed nerves. In that moment, I allowed myself to feel a flicker of hope, a sense that maybe, just maybe, this trip could be the bridge back to the love and understanding we once shared. The idea of a romantic getaway, of two weeks in paradise with the man I still loved, felt like a lifeline, a chance to turn the page on the recent bitterness and start a new chapter. The days leading up to our Hawaii trip were a whirlwind of anticipation and preparation. Alex, taking charge of the arrangements, insisted on handling everything. Jenna, you've been working too hard lately. Let me sort out the tickets and the hotel. You just focus on packing and getting ready for our escape, he said, a smile playing on his lips. I was touched by his thoughtfulness, a glimpse of the man I fell in love with. That's so sweet of you, Alex. Thank you, I could really use the break. I replied, my heart light with the promise of a fresh start. With Lisa's help, I dove into preparations. Shopping for the trip was like weaving dreams into reality. Jenna, this swimsuit is stunning on you. Alex won't be able to take his eyes off you. Lisa chuckled as I twirled in front of the mirror, the fabric hugging my curves just right. Thanks, Lisa. I really hope this trip brings us back together. It feels like we're finally turning a page, I said, the excitement bubbling within me like champagne. The day of departure arrived, and I was a bundle of nerves and excitement. Alex seemed more upbeat than usual, a good sign, I thought. As we reached the airport, the buzz of travelers and the scent of adventure filled the air. But the unexpected sight of Lisa there turned the excitement into confusion. Lisa? What are you doing here? I asked, a knot forming in my stomach. The smirk on Alex's face and the glint in Lisa's eyes were the first cracks in my carefully built hopes. Jenna, the thing is, Lisa's the one joining me to Hawaii. Not you, Alex said, his words slicing through the din of the airport like a knife. I stood there, disbelief and betrayal warring within me. But Alex, this trip was for us, our chance to reconnect. I stammered, the world tilting around me. His laughter was a sound I barely recognized, cold and distant. Reconnect? Jenna, you're living in a dream. I'm done playing house. Lisa and I, we're a thing now. Your little vacation plan just turned into our romantic getaway. Lisa's grip on Alex's arm tightened, her victory clear in her eyes. Oh, Jenna, you're such a dear friend. Funding our little escapade, how generous of you. Their words were daggers, their laughter a poison, spreading through my veins. You're leaving me just like this? I managed to say, my voice a mere whisper. He shrugged, the casualness of his betrayal a final blow. The divorce papers waiting for you at home, Jenna. Just sign them. 
It's the least you can do for us. Left alone in the echoing vastness of the airport, the world around me felt unreal, like a scene from a movie where the protagonist's life unravels before her eyes. My heart was heavy, a mix of betrayal, shock, and an overwhelming sense of loss consuming me. It was then, amid the chaos of my crumbling world, that an unexpected voice reached out. Hey, are you okay? Do you need help with anything? The voice was gentle, concerned, cutting through the fog of my despair. I looked up, my eyes meeting those of a stranger. He was about my age, his expression kind, genuine. I, my husband, they just left me here. I stammered, the words feeling foreign as they left my lips. The man hesitated for a moment, then took a careful step closer. I'm Ethan. If you want, I can stay with you for a bit, or help you get home, whatever you need. He offered, his tone warm and sincere. His kindness, a stark contrast to the cold betrayal I had just experienced, was a small light in the darkness. Thank you, Ethan. I'm Jenna. I. I don't even know where to begin. We found a quiet corner in a cafe, the noise of the airport fading into the background. Ethan listened as I poured out the story, the pain, and confusion evident in my every word. So, he planned this all along? took your idea and turned it into, this? Ethan's voice was a mix of anger and disbelief. I nodded, the reality of the situation sinking in deeper with every spoken word. I feel so foolish, Ethan. To think I was planning this trip to fix things, and all the while, he was planning, this. Ethan's gaze was steady, supportive. Jenna, you're not foolish. You're human, and you trusted someone you loved. That's not foolishness, that's courage. And his actions, that's cowardice. His words were a bomb, soothing the raw edges of my wounded heart. We talked for what felt like hours, Ethan's presence a steady anchor in the storm that had become my life. Eventually, he glanced at his watch, a gentle reminder of the world moving on around us. Jenna, I can drive you home if you want. You shouldn't be alone right now. The offer, so simple yet so profound, was a lifeline. Thank you, Ethan. I'd appreciate that. I just... I don't want to face that empty house just yet, but I know I need to. The drive was quiet, the hum of the engine a backdrop to my tumultuous thoughts. As we reached my house, the reality of what awaited me inside hit hard. Ethan seemed to sense my hesitation. Jenna, if you need anything, here's my number. Don't think you're alone in this. Some people, they're just not worth your tears, he said, handing me a small piece of paper with his number scrawled on it. I took it, a small smile breaking through the tears. Thank you, Ethan. For everything. Today, you were the friend I didn't know I needed. A year had rolled by, a year of healing, of rebuilding, of finding strength I never knew I had. But stepping back into my hometown, the ghosts of my past were waiting, lurking in the shadows of familiar streets and faces. It was in a quaint little cafe, where the past decided to rear its ugly head. Sitting there, lost in my thoughts, a voice that I hoped to never hear again cut through the calm. Jenna! Look what the cat dragged in! Still the same, I see. Alex sneered, his eyes raking over me with a disdain I remembered all too well. I took a deep breath, bracing myself. What do you want, Alex? I asked, my voice steady, a testament to the year of battles fought and won. His smirk grew wider, more malicious. Just wanted to flaunt my perfect life, Jenna. Lisa and I, we're married now. And guess what? She's given me a child, something you never could. His words stung, a deliberate jab at my deepest wounds. But the old Jenna, the one who would crumble, was no more. Good for you, Alex. I hope you're happy. I replied, my words a shield against his cruelty. But he wasn't done. The arrogance, the sheer audacity, dripped from his next invitation. Why don't you come over, Jenna? See the life you missed out on. Meet your replacement and our beautiful baby. It was a challenge, a cruel game in his twisted mind. But this time I was playing by a different set of rules. Sure, Alex. 
I'll come by. It's time to face the past, I said, the resolve in my voice, belying the storm inside. And so, I found myself at the doorstep of the home I once shared with Alex, my heart pounding, not with fear, but with a fierce determination. The door swung open, and there stood Lisa, her smirk a mirror of Alex's cruelty. Jenna, you haven't changed a bit. Still the same old gray mouse, she taunted, her words dripping with scorn. But the Jenna standing at her doorstep was not alone. Beside me stood Ethan, the unexpected ally from the airport, now my partner, my strength. I introduced him with pride swelling in my chest. Lisa, meet Ethan, my husband. The shock on their faces was a sight to behold. Alex's smugness faltered, Lisa's mockery dimmed. They tried, oh how they tried, to belittle us, to break us down with their venomous words. But together, Ethan and I stood strong, a united front against the storm of their malice. Jenna, I can't believe you'd stoop so low. Bringing him here, what a desperate move. Alex scoffed, his words a feeble attempt to regain control. Ethan's arm around my shoulder was all the response I needed. Desperate? No, Alex. We're here to close a chapter, to move on from the past that you cling to so pitifully. The air was tense as Ethan and I stood in the living room of the house I once called home. The walls, once witnesses to my heartache, were now the backdrop for the final act of a saga that had tormented me for too long. Alex's mocking tone sliced through the silence. Remember how lost you looked at the airport, Jenna? Like a little puppy abandoned by its owner. I still laugh thinking about it. The words were meant to wound, but as I looked into Ethan's supportive eyes, I felt an unwavering strength within me. Actually, Alex, that day turned out to be a blessing. Because of your cruelty, I met Ethan. He's been my rock ever since, I replied, a serene smile on my face. Alex's smirk wavered, confusion and shock intermingling in his gaze as he looked at Ethan. And what's so special about this guy? He sneered, trying to regain his footing. Ethan's presence was calm yet imposing. Well, Alex, aside from picking up the pieces of the life you shattered, I also recently became the director at your esteemed company. Funny how life works, isn't it? The revelation hit Alex like a physical blow, his arrogance melting away, leaving a pale, shaken man in its place. Before he could recover, Lisa, with her characteristic spite, decided to strike what she thought would be a crushing blow. At least I gave Alex something you couldn't, Jenna. A child. The ultimate gift. She spat, her eyes gleaming with malice. The room was charged, the air thick with tension and unspoken truths. I couldn't help but laugh, the absurdity of the situation and the secret I held turning my despair into amusement. Oh, Lisa, the irony of your statement is richer than you know, I said, reaching into my bag. I pulled out the envelope containing the test results, the paper that held the key to unlocking the sham that was their life. Alex, these tests we took, they revealed a truth you've been too blind to see. You're incapable of fatherhood. This child Lisa's so proud of? It can't be yours. The words hung heavy in the room, a tangible testament to the crumbling facade of their lies. Alex's face was a mask of shock and betrayal, his eyes darting between the paper in his hand and Lisa's suddenly ashen face. Lisa's voice trembled, her confidence shattered. Alex, baby, this must be some mistake. Jenna's lying, she has to be. But there was no mistaking the truth, the undeniable reality inked on the paper. The arguments erupted, accusations and denials bouncing off the walls, the sound of their once united front cracking at the seams. Ethan's hand squeezed mine, a silent signal that it was time to leave the chaos behind. Let's go, Jenna. We have our own future to look forward to, one built on truth and love, not deceit. As we stepped out of the house, the door closing behind us felt like the final chapter of a painful saga coming to an end. The sun outside seemed brighter, the world filled with new possibilities, and the promise of the life growing inside me, a life created from love, not lies. Behind us, Alex and Lisa's world, a house of cards built on deception, was left to collapse. 
The courtroom would be their next battleground, but for Ethan and me, it was the start of something beautiful. A chapter of joy, of honest love, and the sweetest victory of all, a life well lived, a future bright with hope and the laughter of our soon-to-arrive child.